Good morning and welcome along. This is Euro Game Day Breakfast on TalkSport. I'm Natalie Sawyer and alongside me it's the former Millwall, Chelsea and Republic of Ireland striker Tony Cascarino. Good morning. How are you, Cass? I'm very good. How's great week. Been? What a great week of football. Oh, yeah. Uh, honestly, Nat, some of the games. Turkey's performance, um, mm. the goals that they got in the game. I think Spain again. Really, really good. Ruthless, and a bit usual. of bad in there as well. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what you're referring to when it comes to the bad. Look, there's lots for us to get through in what is a busy four-hour show. We're with you until 10 o'clock this morning. Um, we need to get to something first. Go uh, on. You're not too tired, are you? <laughs> Working every day? <laughs> Bar Tuesday. Um, oh, uh, the racing. Tuesday. I was at the races. <laughs> you know, I should have thought to myself, use that Tuesday as a day off to reset and go again. But no, I decided to go to Royal Ascot, which was lovely, I must say. I had a oh, lovely good. time. Um, and the weather was great. So it was fabulous all, all round. Um, do you know what, as well? I didn't really put any bets on. Sometimes I go to racing and I'm, I'm all for it. I'm, you know, I wonder get... why. <laughs> no, <laughs> but the funny thing, I was very lucky to be invited into a box and so I talking had them... too much. And yeah, well, there yeah. was a bit of that. Um, but they did a little, little like tips to challenge yeah, in, yeah. in the in the box, and I won that. Oh. I picked three winners in that, and yet I didn't actually put money on those winners. <laughs> oh, dear. And I got a box of chocolates for winning, and I thought, hmm, I should have put money on those. But anyway, never mind, never mind. Lesson learned. A great day nonetheless. Um, right, shall we talk England? Yeah. We are going to talk a fair bit about England throughout the show. Mm. Two games, four points on the board, unbeaten. On paper, it looks good. Um, and actually... <laughs> That's quite standard England that they often start a tournament with a, a win yeah. and a draw. And that's what they've done. Serbia victory 1-0 and then that uh, one-all draw with Denmark. Um, yet, yeah, obviously, Cass, that Serbia win uh, as well, as good a win as it was in terms of three points on the board and opening the tournament with a victory, we know that it wasn't a great display. And so we were expecting a lot more when it came to that Denmark game, and yet it felt as though it got worse. Yep. Yeah. Um, right. England have played 180 minutes plus, obviously, injury mm-hmm. time of football. In them 180 minutes, um, you're looking at 30 minutes of good in the first half hour mm. of the game against Serbia. From then, the downfall, and it's been spiralling out of control, by the way, because it's to what I saw against Denmark. And I just want to mention this on Denmark. Denmark had six players in their starting lineup that are playing in the Premier League or have played in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. And two subs that come on that are playing in the Premier League. Yeah. And most of them are not star names. They've got, obviously, the likes of Ericsson, but he's not a certain star at Man United these days. Mm-hmm. But there's Christiansen at the back, and there's many others. Best player on the pitch was Hoyland. Uh, um, Hoybier. Uh, Hoybier, yeah, at uh, mm. Spurs. Mm. And I, I thought he was outstanding. I never expected Ericsson, Hoyberg, you know, two players, ex or say, Premier League players, who are dominating the midfield against Bellingham, mm. Rice, mm-hmm. Trent. Really? There has to be something flawed in their setup to be that poor in them two games. And I. I knew it was, as soon as I saw the performance or watched the Denmark game, I knew it was going to be this weekend, it would be all articles about every little thing about England, Mm -hmm. whether it's tactical, whether it's personnel, who should be dropped. I've listened to the radio. Manager should be sacked. What was that, Jermaine Pennant? Jermaine Pennant, yeah. You know, everything's coming out and it's going to be like this until England either show that they they are capable. Because they will get knocked out. If they played like they did against Denmark and against Serbia, they will get knocked out and... You know, I listened to Jason Cundy as well talking about it midway, and it will be when they get knocked out. Will it be quarterfinals? Will it be semi-finals? They will get knocked out. So things. Do you know as well, Nat? Just one quick point on this: Scotland were awful yeah. in the five-one defeat in Germany yep. against Germany. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? They were a completely different team five days later. And okay, they wasn't playing the host nation, but their performance against the the the, the Swiss and how they. Uh, the way they played mm-hmm. the, their performance, it was completely different. So there is time for recovery, and it wasn't much of a change in lineup which Steve Clark did. But McTominay played a forward role. He played in front of McGregor uh, and Gilmore as midfield, played yeah. in front of the pill, and Mad McGinn and Adams sort of split as a two, and it worked much better for them. 
So there's the tactical side of, of a change. Yes, it wasn't Germany, but it was Switzerland. Oh, a decent side. Just two points. And like I said, we are going to talk more about England throughout the show, so I'm conscious of not taking up too much about England right now. But you mentioned the Jermaine Pennant, <clears throat> and he did say, look, sack, sack Southgate now. Would that be the right thing? No, Could you, no, you I can't I mean, it do doesn't that. seem conceivable to do it, but then obviously the Ivory Coast did it in the African Cup of Nations yeah, and then I, went on to win the tournament. So it is something that, I mean, you, you've got to be brave to do that and then you've got to have the right person that you think can take over. I can't see it happening. I, I don't necessarily think it would well, be the right thing to do either because I just don't know no. who would come in. Um, As a one-off, and also we don't know the dynamics before Ivory Coast got to the tournament, if he was even in a position of weakness already before the tournament started. Some which, might say Southgate was already well, in that in well, terms of the fans' favour. Yeah, well, that, the fans thing has changed changed completely and now it was i think it was mixed mm. it's definitely not it's it's changed because of what they've witnessed one thing that i remember hearing gareth southgate say after that denmark result was that one of the biggest issues was a, a lack of ball possession and a lack of pressing which led to anxiety within the team now, when the manager is coming out and talking about anxiety in a team that is full of star players, mm. to me, I took that as quite a worrying thing, that there could be such a, a fear within an England team that maybe it's the pressure. Maybe he's talking more about the pressure and that's why they're not delivering because well, they're failing to deal with it. But still, with it, that to me, I took away and thought, that's quite worrying that he's talking about anxiety already in the group stage. Well, I'm not a fan of managers... Um... Wrapping players up in uh, in bubble wrap. Mm -hmm. Personally, mm -hmm. I'm not fan. I'm not fan of managers who want to hold the player's hand crossing the road at 22 years old. I'm not a fan of it because right. they're men. Okay, they can lead and drive the team as well. I would like to see a reaction from the players and maybe be a bit more verbal, not with you know having a go, but within the dressing room mm -hmm. because I think Gareth has done so much work on protecting anxiety and Graham Sooners and I'm sure we'll talk about this in the newspaper review uh, yeah. later um, talks about you've got four leaders you've got this committee you know this committee of four leaders let them be leaders because mm -hmm. they need to be England need to have leadership on the field and I think Gareth needs I think just step back a bit from anxiety you're playing in high level export Okay, it's an extreme level. When you're playing international football, it's the highest level of, of football. Any, if you play at Wimbledon, it, you know, anxiety and pressure, it's there. You have to be able to deal with it, a bit of resilience. Yeah, well, that leadership group that you're referring to, obviously, is Harry Kane, Carl Walker, Declan Rice and Jude Bellingham, who was put, put into that leadership group uh, during this Euros uh, tournament. Um, you're right. I mean, some, that's something the Scotland camp talked about after that Germany game. They said there was fear in the side. Yeah. Which you can understand. They're kicking off the tournament. You could be the nervous. Host. Yeah. yeah. And you can make bad decisions But then in the you put it right the next game like Scotland did. Yeah. And we haven't yet seen that from England. And that is the biggest problem. That being said, it's still positive in the sense that they're not, they haven't lost a game. And you could, you know, in that Serbia and also in that Denmark game, they could have actually lost that game just in the way that it was going. And maybe we need to give credit to the, to the defence, which pre-tournament we were all saying that's yeah. the biggest issue for England yeah. is that defence Mark Gahey I think has been absolutely tremendous coming into a first major yeah. tournament for him so there are some positives I, perhaps you could take but maybe not that many take the FA Cup final yeah right Man United come mm -hmm. up against Man City were they anxious were they focused mm hmm I was. I would say they're focused on it, and they knew. Of course, they were nervous before the game. You, mm. you generally do. If you ain't got nerves, and you're, you're probably not in the right mindset, but yeah, you do suffer yeah. from nerves. But they they made a point of standing up to Man City. You know, so England have a have a chance now to reverse this trend. I, I I'd want to see the players be v way more determined and lead and show leadership. What? Well, we will get more of your thoughts on England then, and uh, especially as they've got that game against Slovenia on Tuesday, their final group game. Um, see what you have to say about maybe possible changes for Gareth Southgate to make uh, ahead of that final group game. What is this? Talk sport.